My name is Taehyun, and I'm from South Korea. And I am into in how to enhance the development experience. And I'm currently working as a software engineer at Carrot in South Korea. Uh, we aim to build a hyperlocal community to serve several services such as buy and sell. So, well, this is my first time to attend the EuroPython, and it is great honor to be here as a speaker. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about and introduce the concept of the documentation-first development with FastAPI. So, before I start my presentation, I want to like quick survey. So, how many of people who have not used FastAPI before? So, can you raise your hands? Okay, and then how many people who have used Fast API before? Oh, okay, thank you. Thanks for answering my survey. And today uh, I aim for the beginners and to give some tips of the Fast API. And so I hope you can get some tips even if you are already experts of the Fast API. So, first things first. Let's talk about the communication. There are two engineers, a client engineer and a server engineer. A client engineer wants to know the interface of the API. So like question to the server engineers like, how can I request to the server? What I need to include in the request body? Or why, why I get this error response? Can you tell me the specification? A server engineer can answer just like these by pointing to something such as their codes. So ask the interface of the request and point to something. So as you can see, they ask an answer by verver. Well, it is still efficient when we need to be hurry to implement new features or enhance the features. However, what if a client engineer forgets the interface and asks more than twice or third times? An impatient engineer can be irritated of this and say, ah, oh, you already asked this before. So this is a terrible situation. So, are there more efficient ways? Are there more efficient ways by using software engineering? We are engineers, hence, let's talk about the efficient ways with the software engineering in this presentation. So, what I will cover in this presentation are first, the importance of the documentation, and in this document, in this presentation, the words document or the documentation mean the API documentation. Second, the traditional methods to generate the documentation. Third, code-based documentation with Fast API Web Framework. Fourth, the efficient and safety ways how to manage the documentation. Lastly, the future of the documents. Then, what I will not cover in this presentation are, first, the details of the OpenAPI specification. Second, the internal things of packages such as FastAPI. Third, the detailed explanation of types in Python. Lastly, the silver bullet. The things I will share are not the best solution for all cases, hence you need to move it over uh, by your situations. So now let's begin to the importance of the documents. So why? Why the documentation is so important? Let's think the imp importance uh, as the collaborate perspective. There are two types of collaboration. First, macro collaboration, which means to collaborate with external people. 
Second, microcollaboration, which means com communicate with the internal peoples. So I will tell you first the microcollaboration. As I have mentioned, a client engineer and a server engineer can communicate by verbal. But what if there are tons of client engineers and server engineers? Regardless the size of team, they still need to communicate. So we realized that we need some standard to communicate well. But what standard? What can we choose for this, this standard? We can usually use the open API specification for the standard. One of the biggest advantage of this specification is that client engineers can generate their code through the specification. So let me show the example. For example, if we define the book object, which has a property called name as a string type, client engineers can generate their codes easily by using some packages, such as OpenAPI TypeScript code gen. So the result generates the codes in TypeScript by the specification. Now let's talk about the micro-collaboration. Server engineers also communicate each other. So they discuss about how to refactor, how to fix the bugs, or how to enhance features or performance. Consequently, they also need standard because they need standard for the better decisions or discussions. So when we talk about the importance of the documentation, we need to consider that all the engineers need to communicate each other. And for what? For better software, to make software them better than before. So if there is a well-produced document in our team or company, we can grow our software efficiently because we can discuss based on the documents and check what, it, what, it, what we need to. Now, let's move on to the next agenda. So how we generate the documentation before? There are three ways. First, using comments. Second, using documentation tools. Lastly, using API client platforms. So let's talk about the comment first. You can generate documents based on the open API specification with comments. Some packages read the comments and generate the documents with it. So you need to know the specification of comments too, the details of the package. Learning the details of the package to generate the documents uh, is also inefficient, but the most crucial disadvantage of using comment is that it needs to update the comments if the schema is changed. But we have already experienced that it does not work well because we usually forget to update the comments if the schemas or codes are changed too. So now let's talk about the documentation tools. There are lots of tools such as Notion and Google Docs. You can create documents by using Notion with code blocks and descriptions or headings. So it is easy to generate and write the documents. So we also can manage the history or revision or version of the documents. But as you can think, we still need to update the documentation and the notion when if the schema is changed, just like the comment. What about API client platforms? A Postman is a well-known API client platforms. So you can generate 
the documents through the postman by using the responses of the APIs. As you can see, you can also add some description of the APIs. And the postman used the response as the examples in the documents. But we still need to update the documents in the postman if the schema is changed, just like the comments or the documentation tools. Well, the main problem is the relationship between the codes and the documents. So we need to synchronize the codes and documents to decrease the human errors, such as forgetting to update the comments. So can we synchronize automatically? Moreover, which one should be the single source of truth, code or the document? Let's think about the document as the single source of the truth. As I mentioned before, client, client engineers can generate their code through the open API specification. We define the book object with a name property, and it generates the TypeScript code as an interface. Not only the client engineers, server engineers also can generate their codes by using the specification. For example, if we use OAPI code gen in Go language packages, we can generate the server-side codes in Go through the specification. So this is kind of called metaprogramming. Now, all the engineers, both client engineers and server engineers, can participate and fix the schemas because the schema is the source of the single source of the truth. So it is really useful uh, because client engineers also can participate to fix the interfaces. So if you concern the documents as the single source of the truth, it can be documentation first development. But what about microservices? If several services need to use the same API of our server, where they may just want to use our API, not to participate to fix or discuss about the interfaces. Moreover, it is inefficient to make all engineers to fix the schemas. So it is our own responsibility to manage the documentation. So what about code? Let's make codes the single source of the truth. It is time to talk about the Fast API. So Fast API is a Python web framework. It internally used Pydantic and Starlet. Well, there are lots of advantages of the Fast API, such as being easy to create async API or dependence injection but I want to focus on auto-generated documentation. As I said, Fast API uses the Pydantic, and we can define model with Pydantic. You can simply think that this is a kind of DTO, a data transfer object. Moreover, we can define the fields of the model, such as the name of the book, and it becomes a property of the book in the OpenAPI specification. <laughs> now, when you create a router, which means an API, we can use the model we defined as a response model. We build the model by using the Pydantic. Then FastAPI generates the document documents automatically by using the model we defined. As you can see, it creates an example of the response by using parameter called the examples of the field. So additionally, we can also add comments to describe the details of the APIs. Fast API also creates the comments as a description of the APIs automatically. 
So lastly, there is also a schema of the model. So as we can see, client engineers can generate their codes by using this specification, this schema. But wait, you can think that isn't it code first of instead of documentation first? But no, it is documentation first, but generated by the codes. We don't implement any business logic or the details of the API. So we just create the documents, the interface first. So this is still the documentation first. Now, let's talk about the efficiency. How can we write the documents better? We can think clearness and consistency for the efficiency. Before we talk about the details, we have a new requirements. We need to add country and language information of the books. So we need to consider some cases. Are, con are countries and languages limited? Do we need to filter books by countries and languages? Or are there any additional error responses to create? So let's reserve the issues by moving on to clearness first. So we can think three aspects, three things about when we talk about the clearness, the field, the validation, and the version. We can add some fields in the model to meet our requirements. As you can see, we set the type of the fields as literal and enum object. We can also reuse the object in the louder. Now, what happens in the documentation? Fast API uses the, these objects, literal and the enum object, to create parameters automatically. Moreover, it uses the members as examples, such as USA. So now another requirement. We need to make authors to register their information, such as name or email. So our authors need to be over 19 years old? Or do we need to show their full name Let's talk about the validation first. We need to add authors of the books, and there are some restrictions. We can use GE parameter, which stands for greater and equal, to restrict the minimum age of the authors. We also can use the email string object provided by Pydantic to specify the email fields as email form. Now, if we check the schema that FastAPI creates, it used those validations on the schema too. So age must be over 19 years, years old, and the email field must be the form of the email. It is helpful when the client engineers need to know the details and generate the codes by this specification. So Fast API can define validation of the field automatically in the documentation. We can also use this computed field as a decorator to combine two fields in Pydantic. Computed field helps to generate a new field by using others in the model. Then, as you can see, it uses the first name and the last name to join and create the full name. Now, you can see there is a name field which is generated to jo uh, by joining two fields, first name and the last name. And you can also see that it is a lead omni, which means clients can include the name fields when they request to the server. They can just read it. So as I mentioned before, Clients can generate 
their codes with these specifications, and they will not make any mistakes because it informs that it is a read-only property. So Fast API and Pydantic hope to generate a new field efficiently and also make lead only to inform the clients. This field is generated by the server, not by you, not by the client. As a result, I can summarize what we did. We analyzed our requirements and generate documents by codes to discuss about it. Sometimes we need to separate the versions of the APIs. For example, we also need to handle the two new requirements. We add countries and language information of the books, and also we need to make authors to register their information, such as email. You can separate the instance of Fast API for each version. Then generate a root instance and mount the sub apps to the root instance. Fast API supports the sub apps pattern by using this mount method. As you can see, Fast API generates the first version of API documents in v1 docs endpoint and the second version in the v2 docs endpoint. Now let's move on to consistency. Consistency refers the predictability. This is a form of the error response which Fast API generates. We need to use these three fields, location, message, input, on our custom exceptions for the predictability. It might be better to inform our clients at the same way because sometimes they need to use the error messages. So we need to generate the same form of the error response that Fast API creates. We can use JSON schema extra variable in the config class. We can define our customized values of open API specification, such as examples. Then we can set status code as a key and model we defined with customized examples with JSON schema extra variable as a value in the responses, the parameter at the router layer. Consequently, Fast API generates the error, error examples with our customized models. You can see that the status code 401 and 403 has their own examples. We can also use generic for a common structure of success responses, such as the data key. As you can see, if we pass the response with a unified structure, client engineers always predict that they can access the leisure with the key named the data. You can define customized type by using type bar in Python, and the type called data bounds to base model, hence we can pass our models defined by the Pydantic. Then we can use generic to define our fields dynamically. Now past the real model that we defined with the using the Pydantic uh, with base model class. As a result, Fast API can use the details of each model. Moreover, all the results are included in the same key called data. We talk about the clearness and the consistency to generate the better documents. So why we need to concern the clearness and consistency? <coughs> why we need well-produced documents? Most of softwares need to be changed or fixed because the requirements are always changing. 
As you can see, we cost much lower on analyzing the requirements and design stages. Thus, we can use the well-produced documentations, especially documentation first, uh, development philosophy, to decline these costs because we embrace any changes or discuss more details efficiently these two stages, requirements and design. We need to handle the new requirements adding countries or languages information of the books. Then we build a documentation first by using some pedantic types such as literal or the enum object. We use these objects as parameters of the API. Also use JSON schema extra and generic type with customized type for the predictability. Not only handling countries and languages, uh, we also handle to add author to the domain. So what we did first, we used sub apps pattern for versioning of APIs, enum and literal objects to limit the values some validation in Pydantic, such as GE, which stands for greater, greater and equal, and email form. Creating new fields by using existed field in Pydantic, and generics to create unified responses. Consequently, we can build both interfaces and documents by codes. So, it helps to enhance the development experience because we don't need to manage separately the codes and the documents. Now, let's move on the safety. How can we manage our documents much safer? But wait, why is the safety important when we manage the documents? Because of the vulnerability. External people can spot the weakness of our APIs or our systems through the documents. There are three ways to manage your documents safer. First, exclude all APIs in the documents. Second, exclude only specific APIs such as Webhook or Health Check Endpoint for the readiness proof on Kubernetes. Lastly, control the access or permissions of the users. Let's talk about the how can we exclude all the APIs. Well, Fast API generates three documents automatically. First, the JSON schema as a form of the OpenAPI specification at openapi.json endpoint. Second, API documents that engineers can see based on the swagger at docs endpoint. And lastly, on other documents, which also use the open API specification, but not using swagger, the at redoc endpoint. So fast API object has three parameters related with the documents, open API URL, docs URL and the redoc URL. If you want to unpublish all the documents, you need to handle the open API URL parameter. If you only want if you only handle docs URL or redoc URL, you still publish the documents and external people can access the specification of your APIs. So please be careful to handle these parameters. Now let's move on how we can exclude only specific APIs. Sometimes we don't want to include some APIs such as webhook endpoints from the external providers or health check endpoints for the readiness proof on Kubernetes because our clients don't need to know the details of them. You can use include in schema parameter when you register, 
register the API to the fast API instance, if you pass first to the value of the parameter, fast API does not publish this API. As I mentioned, it is useful for some APIs, clients that don't need to know that. Now, it's time to talk about the access control. What if we need to serve our APIs on both public and private? Then how can you make our teams can only see the documents, not on the public? You can also use sub apps pattern as we talk during the versioning of the APIs. You can separate the apps, public and the private. Then just unpublish the documents of, on the public apps and by using open API URL and publish documents of private apps. You can also use the dependency for the access control. It, in this example, we limit the IP address to access the documents because if IP address of client is not localhost. So it returns forbidden exception if the client is not in the localhost. You can add this dependency in routers by using depends in fast API. But wait why we need to handle two APIs, the openAPI.json and the docs. As you can see, we add the dependency in two APIs. Let's think about how FastAPI generates the documents. As we saw before, we need to handle openAPI URL to unpublish the whole documents. And as you can see, there is the special endpoint openAPI.json. So FastAPI generates the JSON of schemas at openAPI.json endpoint. Then it used these values to generate the documents at docs endpoint with the swagger. This is why external people can still access two endpoints, openAPI.json and the docs endpoint, if you only block the redoc. So last but not least, you also need to use get open API method and the get swagger UI HTML. So fast API generates open API specification by using get open API method and documents based on swagger by using this get swagger UI HTML. Not only the API documentations, we can also think about our software architecture and entity relationship diagram for our relational databases. What about using packages called emerge to show the structure of our source code with commands? Uh, emerge has to visualize your structures, metrics, dependencies, or anything complexity of the software as a graph visualization. What about using packages called ER Archemy to show entity relational diagram of the database written by SQL Archemy? Maybe it might be better it reflects the change of our diagrams to our codes or vice versa. The point is that we need to think how we can grow our software continuously with an efficient communication such as well-produced documents. Now, let's recap the presentation. We talk about the importance of the documentation for continued growth of the software. Second, we looked several ways of generating and managing documents, such as using comments or documentation tools like Notion or Google Docs and the Postman. Third, we discussed to use literal and enum object to provide the clearness of the documents. Moreover, we talked how we can give consistency of our documents by using customized types and generics. Additionally, we use internal validations such as GE greater than equal and email string object. 
and use computed field as a decorator to create a new field efficiently. Also, we can separate our API versions and boundaries such as public and private by using SOBAP's patterns in Best API. Lastly, we can use the dependency with depends in Best API to control the access of the documents. The most important thing is that we need to generate the documents first to meet requirements properly. Then Fast API helps us to create interfaces and it, enhan it enhances our development experience. So this is my end of presentation. Thanks for listening to my presentation. Thank you very much, Tehan. Um, we have a few minutes for some questions. So, okay, yeah, we have one question there. Um, you showed here that um, with the access codes. Um, please speak into the microphone so we can hear. Uh, is it okay now? Yes. Okay, all right. Yeah, you showed earlier that um, you can, uh, let's say, make it private by only giving access to some IP address. But uh -huh. is it also possible to include domain users, for example? or somehow give access based on the domain user access? You mean like, the like control example, the access based on the yeah. domains? Yes. Yes, we can because okay. we, the Fast API gives the request object with the request class and it has the like kind of host or domain, the information, so you can still access the domain or IP address or whatever you want. Okay. Thank you, any other? Any other question? Okay, so in the absence of any questions, I think the current break we have is for lunch. So we we'll have a long break for lunch, but yeah. Thank you all for joining the session and see you around. <laughs>